almost forget. Hola community, welcome to Blender today, 198, we are getting close to a celebration, that's gonna be in a couple weeks, which means we should be getting closer to Beacon 3, which means Blender 3.3 um, beta and Beacon, and Beacon 1 for, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves, plenty of things this week because actually the, the Blender 3.3 moved into the second phase of development where um, there is no like room for huge improvements um, like big features that can break stuff but it's all about improving the, the, the existing ones and that actually is bringing up some new nodes for geometry nodes some video sequence editor updates some new devices support for cycles some uh, modeling tra like snapping tools uv editing like actually we get the and line art npr people are gonna be pretty happy with what has been added this week so without further ado let's start with the announcements one of them it's the the sale for tickets actually is for the blender conference it started on um Thursday, actually, which means you can go and uh, secure your ticket. I checked this morning and it was around 20% of the tickets already already sold, uh, but there is plenty more. Like most of the people, I think they buy them at the very beginning and then at the end there's like a rush of people. We're going to be sharing on uh, social media, on Blender Con, actually on the Blender Conference website and on, the, on, on Blender's Twitter, you can also find the announcements we're gonna be sharing here in case you know i don't know someone decides to go and buy through 200 tickets all at once um but you should be able to see what's what's the progress so far there is two uh, types of tickets one is a one day and a full conference ticket this conference this uh, is for all three days they include dinner they include lots of fun and inspiration um and that's not clickbait actually it is quite fun and it's yeah, I just get to, to nerd about Blender for three days. What can be better than that? A week, maybe? Maybe one day. Um, the There will be also a, a party, I believe, in the past. Actually, the dinner was uh, separate. It was uh, a separate ticket that you have to buy. And this time, it's included both dinners. So that actually should make it a bit better. And uh, yeah, it is not the cheapest event, but also not the most expensive um and the place is super nice so i hope everyone can make it other than two dinners a day no <laughs> one per <laughs> one per day but um that is the, uh, the big announcement related to blender community but also last week i was very sure that there will be a 3.2.1 release on wednesday on last wednesday and actually i was wrong there were some high priority bug reports that it would probably um, if 3.2.1 was released on wednesday it would mean that there will be like a 3.2.2 on this wednesday or just didn't make any sense so that release got delayed and we're gonna hopefully see it on this Wednesday. Um, usually releases go out on Wednesdays. So it goes for regular releases, but also for um, for Blender uh, smaller corrective releases. They're always on, on a Wednesday because if something goes wrong, you can do Thursday and you're not releasing on Friday. You should never release on a Friday. Um, yeah, around 69. Nice. Bug reports uh, have been addressed in this release. A bunch of them are crashes. EV also got a lot of attention, so you should check it out. GPU subdivision that proved to have uh, brought a lot of issues uh, on older hardware. So for the time being, just make sure you keep your drivers up to date. All right, shall we? We shall. We shall. We shall. All right. Let's start with a with a bang. Geometry nodes. He has three new nodes. Um, this week. One of them is the simpler one, which is a, well, not simpler one, but it's a modifier that you already are familiar with in uh, volume objects. The volume objects have a special modifier that can convert, if you don't know what it is, I can just show you right now because the, I think we're going to have time this, uh, this today. 
to talk about this stuff. So let's say I have a empty volume or an open VDV um, file that I download online. There is this mesh to volume modifier only for volume objects that allows you to basically just give like any mesh here in the modifier and you can make it into a volume. So that functionality is now available in the shape of nodes. So the new node is called, um, it's actually, you don't even need a volume object anymore. You can just have the mesh and in the geometry nodes, uh, you're going to add a new node that is called mesh to volume and that's it. So actually you need less objects because geometry nodes can host all kinds of domains. Uh, volumes is one of them. So pretty neat. Come in the mesh, get out the volume and the, um, the options should be about the same. I think uh, the, the fill volume, they're all available also in the regular modifier stuff. Um, although the interior band is only useful actually when you have, um, when you have the fill volume option off. So I wonder, can we gray out? That is mainly for developers. Can we gray out some settings as we, um, in, in nodes themselves, we should be able to. All right. That is one thing. Okay. Wait, wait, let me show uh, the actual give credit where credit is due. Thank you, Eric, for working on this. The actually the original patch by Chris, implementation by Jeremy, and the finished patch by Eric. Team work. All right, the next one is the beginning of something huge, I think, because you can now um, UV and wrap and pack islands on uh like procedurally with with notes so yeah alexi giovanni writes uv unwrap and pack island notes this commit adds a new um, unwrap and pack island so it's two nodes with equivalent functionality to the existing unwrap and pack island operators the unwrap node uses generic boolean attributes to determine seams instead of looking at the seams flags in the mesh geometry or even determines the, the seams interesting you know what else is interesting when actually when people start to use it right away and when they share it online and if you use the hashtag b3d and hashtag geometry notes there is a high chance that i will probably see it online i'm gonna use it like this awesome tweet by amal kumar uv and wrapping notes are here b3d geometry notes so it showed up on my feed and this is is amazing it actually shows what you can do with this stuff so yeah isn't it great this looks like it opens the doors for for many things interessante nice i'm uh, checking out the comments here by the way so if you're in the chat let's make use of this live stream right just leave a comment um isn't it amazing though that you can do this kind of stuff. So please share more. You saved me the the the, the trying to to set it up online and uh, failing at it. You know what else got improved outside of geometry nodes? The existing uh, UV operators <laughs> for straighten. So the operators that uh, make the the lines either horizontal or vertical. Now, there is a few improvements by Chris Blackburn, which I mentioned last week that he got a development fund grant. So if you go to the list of development funds, you can see that developers are actually getting um, they are getting grants by the contributors, by the Blender Foundation, thanks to the contributors to the development fund. One of them is Chris working only on UV stuff. So that is awesome that there's someone dedicated to this area of blender that has been abandoned well not abandoned and is maintained but uh, really didn't have any new things for a while the improvements are first operate on entire selection then one straighten for each selected island so when you select multiples you will make one for each island instead of doing everything <sighs> actually that that was my biggest um yeah rip with this uh, thing prefers pinch pins to anchor to end 
the endpoints of the resulting line. Is there any image? Please. No. Nope, 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 nope. All right, you're gonna have to download Blender from builder.blender.org and try it yourself. Um, next, the other, uh, this is actually a big one. This is a project that um, is part of a larger project, the retopology project, retopology mode in, uh, in, in Blender. And the um, commit goes as follows. Transform snap, nearest face snap mode. What does it mean? Well, and refactoring and snapping options and so on and so forth. But what does it mean? Well, there is already a face snapping option in Blender, but um, it only works because the, the way it works by basically casting rays, it only works for the, for the faces that you can actually see, not for the ones that are like behind the mesh. So this new mode actually works like that. Um, the new face nearest snapping mode will snap transform the geometry to the nearest surface in world space. In contrast, the original face snapping mode uses projection, so ray casting, to snap the source to a target geometry. Face snapping, therefore, only works with what is visible, what you can see in the viewport. While nearest face snapping can snap geometry to occluded parts, which is super handy and critical for retopology work, um, where some of the target mesh might be occluded. So isn't it nice? Wow, we have some bots here. How can how can <laughs> how can YouTube not ban automatically ban people that have like <laughs> so obvious yelling sex on their names? Um like uh yeah. YouTube, you need some uh, <clears throat> to work on that. Mm, what else? Ah, well, actually, uh, like I mentioned, this is a change by Jon Denning. Uh, he's uh, the author, main author of the uh, Read Top of Flow add-on by CG Cookie. So having him and his experience on, on Read Topology in general in Blender, it's so awesome. Again, it's um, covered by your contribution to the Blender Development Fund. So yay for that and for more to come in the shape of building tools. All right, <clears throat> time to move into NPR. So non-photorealistic rendering, grease pencil, line art, 2D, 3D. How do you even call this section? So let's, let's call it NPR. It is now possible for line art so the lines that you should that automatically uh, take the shape of your geometry to not only look at the geometry but also look at the lighting so the shadows there it is now possible to have um the the contour of your lighting and the shadows to have a special line art effect so if we want to see it in action actually we can go to the wiki because the team has been super responsible in adding it into the release notes the work in progress release notes and you can see here for example line art for the object geometry line art for the shadow even the intersection shadow having a different effect for the for the um shading behind the object what you can do with this thing is just just incredible um and again also for the light contour so that's just awesome. oh yeah what you will see here the red is the shadow of this small sphere actually this looks like the the blender conference logo right <laughs> yeah kind of kind of uh may, maybe it was a, a a tribute a homage for um the upcoming event I don't know, just awesome, just awesome. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention in the conference um, that if you're a developer that has been active on uh, Blender lately in the last year or so, and you have patches and commits, you are uh, you can ask for uh, for a discount. So reach out to Thomas Stinges or any other developer on Blender coders to to um, learn more about it. But yeah, you're gonna get a discount um, because you earned it in the shape of of uh, commits um what else 
well no it's just awesome so let, let's look a bit more so this is the shadow there is uh, now line art is able to calculate accurate cast shadows and light shadow separation line given a light source reference object so even per light so so i guess it takes the yeah it's per light uh, filtering feature lines from lit and shaded regions. These images show the example of selecting marked edges from only the lit uh, regions. Lit. <laughs> yeah. And then enclosed shade option, which actually, if there is anybody from the from the team, I think I I noticed a typo there. I shouldn't be doing this, calling out issues. I, I found a typo. That, so by the way, you, this you can find. I don't think there is a picture of the modifier, but the option is available in the the edge types. And then you can click on light contour and cast shadows. Um, and in here, the light reference says E close shapes instead of N close. What else? I think uh, this covers pretty much everything. I, I would say, oh, by the way, all the links of everything that I'm seeing here, it's on the description. So you should be able to follow as I go along. The um, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, the Wiki, Media Wiki of Blender, and the release notes has all these pictures and examples. And I think they're probably the best looking section so far for this release. So well done. What else? This is gonna be a big release, actually. And it's an LTS too, so it's gonna should be good to to last. And you know what? Another section that I had a bunch of, um, but it's been a while that it's it got any updates. Is the motion tracking side of things in Blender? Did you know even know that you can do motion tracking? That you can track videos, reconstruct scenes. Well, now there is an improvement that with just a couple of operators, you can. Uh, create an image from a plane marker. So there is a very nice video that is made by Sebastian Kunig that shows this in action. So let's see. You say you have a... Here. So say you have this wall and you want to track this. So you start adding some points to your right, render this nice high contrast. And then you start tracking, maybe on the letters, so you, so you get a, a plane. And uh, yeah, you get that track, you select the points, and then you go into plane track, create plane track. It's going to make this plane that you can adjust. And now with the operator, the new operators in the track um, sidebar, you can click on new image from plane marker. Once you do that, it's going to create a new image from that selection, which you can export if you want. You can save it and uh, tweak elsewhere, right? For example, you save it, you open it in your favorite uh, software, come back, replace it and use it right away, basically. And you get to replace an image. Just not even touching the 3D side of Blender, just in the view, just in the in the um, using Blender as a motion tracker and then using the compositor to um, put it all together. So in this case, Blender is not even like the 3D side of Blender is like, you don't need me anymore. What is my purpose? <laughs> That's so cool. I can swap billboards now. Yeah, exactly. You can, um, you can swap billboards, deep fakes. No, I don't know. Um, some um, people suggested on the if it can create well I mean, we're asking if they can be created from videos I can't confirm I haven't ah I went to ask Sergey and I forgot um, but an image data block can hold image sequences and whatever so should it be possible maybe not on saving but on loading you should be able to replace it uh, but yeah next oh well the other one is related to oh, to the um, to the motion tracker it's just a change in how the 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 overlays look now there will always be smooth there was an option to show the outline of the splines uh smooth or not 
but it was mainly just to get around a problem in drivers in like in in the drawing um so now you the option is gone because it will always try to be smooth like anti-aliased um unless it's it's it can't then it will show jacked next actually cycles speaking of hardware and drivers and stuff did you know that intel is coming up with their own discrete graphics card you know we, when we talk about graphics cards like actual hardware big massive cards uh we only talk about either amd radeon or nvidia nvidia gtx rtx and so on well there is a new player that this was actually announced a while back but intel is working on their own actually they have announced already a few they i don't think they have been released but blender 3.3 will be ready for them when they are released because blender now supports intel gpu using one api and uh, not um Ideally, I think it's not even just for for the the Intel Arc, but also for the future. This is a contribution by the Intel team that uh, makes it so if you have the right drivers, like in, in on Windows is 101 16.60 and on Linux 22.10. Yeah, yeah, you can see it here. Um, but yeah, this is super exciting. There's new players and Blender will support the graphics cards from day one because when 3.3 came out comes out which is september september 7 8 um this should be uh addressed isn't that awesome when they're gonna release it i don't know exactly but um they they're getting blender ready for when they come out and that is amazing you know it makes feel like blender is actually actually matters <laughs> for the industry and that next also new support for vega gpus and apus and uh, in switching to team red or amd the um, actually yeah they're rgb right red for amd green for nvidia blue for intel i i think there's no more room for other graphics cards <laughs> And, and well, uh, there, and then there is Apple, I guess. What's that? White? Um, yeah, enable Vega and Vega 2 GPUs as well as Vega APU uh, using changes in uh, HIP code to support 64 bit waves and the new HIP SDK version. So many acronyms. <laughs> but yeah, you know what a GPU is? An APU similar is like a, like like an integrated like a CPU with integrated graphics. I think it's acceleration process unit or accelerated. Um, but yeah, here we have some now decoded. By the way, I saw that you're coming to the conference. Awesome. Decoded says that Intel GPUs are expected release Q3 of this year, so Blender might have support for Intel GPUs before they're even out. Ugh, isn't that awesome? Because Blender 3.3 uh, will be on... Well, let's just check. I'm in here on this website. 3.3. Um, and it's September 7th. Yeah. 7 hours. Correct. <clears throat> Next. What else? Vega. Ah, actually, the related to the Vega there. Test was done with a uh, W... With a Radeon WX9100. Radeon 7 GPUs and Ryzen 7 Pro 5850U with Radeon Graphics Apu. <laughs> Apu Apu is the guy from from The Simpsons. At least in the Spanish version was that was the name. <laughs> um mm, next. Video sequence editor. Another big change in the video sequence editor is mainly under the hood but it has to do with the retiming of things in the video sequence editor. It is a huge patch that implements a better way to control the playback speed than it is possible to do with the speed effect. So the speed factor property can be set in the time panel. And this one actually I haven't really tried myself yet. So maybe I shouldn't be, I don't know, I don't even have a video ready with with the because the other big change is actually has to do 
with the um, variable frame rate. So maybe I should first read this one and demo into the other one. So two layers of control for the retiming. First, one option to remove to retime the movie to match the frames per second of your scene and a custom speed factor to control the playback rate. So you can specify it yourself. Since the playback rate is uh, in strip is a property of the each strip. It is now possible to manipulate the strip as normal one, even if it's retimed. So, wait, wait. So, it is actually happening. So, okay, let's see if I have have this video. Ah, it's actually very fitting because this video is from a, from the thumbnail of this video by Daniel Beistet. So there is a time nice and you can adjust the speed factor from here without the effect without having the effect and the effect i think it probably should be there yeah speed control so you have the actually this this is huge i wish we had more pictures or something but the um, strips now have a speed factor which makes it so you don't need the speed control effect strip anymore you just do it from here and they and it can be just tweaked like any other like any other strip isn't it amazing and you can animate this thing too mm. what happened i think i broke something yeah at some point when a specific value the ui breaks there <laughs> um Awesome. So to facilitate manipulation, some functions need to consider speed factor and apply the necessary corrections to strip offset or strip start. These corrections may need to be float numbers to so the start and the offset must be float as well. And the um, sound strips, oh, this also affects sound strip. Now they use a speed factor instead of the pitch. This means that the strings will change length to match the usable length. Okay. <laughs> In addition, it is possible to group the movie and the sound strip and change the speed of a meta strip. Wow, so that's a, it's a big one in terms of workflow. Hmm. It's awesome. And I guess for the sound as well, I don't think I have a I have a sound here, a song about a friend of mine. And yeah, I guess you do speed factor. You don't need to change the pitch of the of it anymore. Although this is not changing the length of the of the oh wait yeah maybe I think this is buggy because it it's not doing anything for the sound strip hey it's it's new stuff <laughs> what if I enable the waveform yeah not doing it for this strip hmm so how does it all right um that wasn't working as expected so we are in alpha ladies and gentlemen we are in alpha so we can <laughs> bug report bugs there was an issue today about uh, that you couldn't report bugs but that has been solved in the in, in this website by the way the other change has to do with variable frame rate in your like in videos in blender in general but mainly affects when you're using the video sequence editor so yeah add support for variable frame rate so it used to be that the spacing between the frames would be constant for the entire length of a movie strip and that it's not that leads to um yeah if you add a variable frame rate video the sound and the video would be would mismatch so that has been solved that's a very very long awaited fix it's amazing all right what else thank you richard for working on that and thank you everyone actually if you look at the if you look at the patch the work that goes and like oh on my birthday last year it was the patch was added and then if you see like the, the work that everybody's doing, like from like Sebastian to test, Sergey to review, um, everyone, there is, uh, Peter is always test testing things and sharing when things go wrong and testing the patch. So it is really a, a team effort. So thanks to everyone involved. And this is what makes things move forward. Mm, 
What else? Let's talk about curves. Yeah, curves. We are talking about experimental stuff now, but it's going to be in 3.3, the ideally. So let's talk about it. There are new tools for the, scarf, the, the curve sculpt mode. How many? Well, there is five new brushes and there is new selection tools, such as you can now select points or curves randomly the same way you can do with a, with a mesh in the when you have when you're in edit mode in the select menu you can select 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 random hmm select select maybe here you could just say random right because in the in the new um, option for the curves I think it just just says random yeah and it makes sense otherwise it reads like select select random um what else Select the endpoints of a curve. Very important if you're doing hair editing, especially. You want to select the the, the, the endpoint and then the, you can wiggle it around. The other operator that was added is the grow shrink operator, the, the control plus and minus to expand your selection or shrink it. And also five new brushes. One, pinching. Same as sculpting, you just pinch, you, you clamp all the points into one. Um, smooth, which if you have a wiggly curve, is going to try to make it as uh, smooth as possible, straight as possible. Puff. The puff brush makes the curves stand up, so it's like you give static to it, I mean, like the hair goes out. Maybe it should be called static. No, I, I like the puff. Density. It adds or removes the curves to achieve a certain density defined by a minimum distance value. And slide. The slide um, tool allows you to basically uh, grab a bunch of particles and move them around the surface without uh, so yeah you just slide them basically you just you just they, they stay attached to the surface they just move around also super super handy <laughs> happy past year birthday thank you big snode <laughs> it's uh no wait does it mean that i now i am older i year older without let's Try not to get older for now. For now. I still have months left. The other improvement has to do with uh, Sculpt UI. The, the Sculpt Curves UI now also tries to be a bit more consistent thanks to this commit by Dalai that changes some labels from minimum distance to distance mix. No, min should be. I think in the commit should be min. Yeah, mean. It's just the, 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 a typo in the comment log. <laughs> That's so cool that you can actually read something and actually scroll to see the actual code, what has changed, and then compare. Um, max count and shift A for the selection row, which is similar to what you have in the expand mask uh, operator when you're sculpting meshes. So yay for consistency. And the last few changes have to do with, e, with IO. EO. One of them, Colada. And here I'm going to make a little parenthesis. Who's using Colada nowadays? Are you using Colada? Is it like a big part of your of your pipeline? Because it's a really um, it's kind of an old format. The, I think the last version, Colada, Colada, was like forever ago. Last release 13 years ago. <laughs> August, actually 14 years ago. Um, yeah, so is anybody else using it with, with GLTF, FBX and all the others? Um, but yeah, there are new features coming. There is one new feature now, support for alpha color in vertex data. Many thanks to the original author of this patch, Christian Aguilera. The, yeah, so alpha color in vertex data. I want to know, please, if you're watching this offline, Leave a comment and all people can jump into are you using um colada or not just curious no no it has nothing to do with dropping and no no just curious the other change related to io is that when you import or export uh, either alembic or usd there will be a print with uh, in the terminal how about how long it took uh, which is pretty handy when you want to compare or just make it part of your 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 pipeline you want to see how long it took for certain options certain files it's mainly developers 
But uh, it's also good to know. It's like a render time. You just want to know to predict things. And that's it, actually. The last change is more of a something that I always like to see is when people add uh, benchmarks or like, like tests. And Cycles has their own tests, but EV didn't have tests for playback. Now they do. Now developers can actually test how uh, fast playback is in EV, which just like automatically. And that is so useful because other smart people like Arendt and the other developers that we have here that can make like an um, automated system or with a bunch of computers, different graphics cards to always run these tests on every commit. So there's a new change, the machines compile Blender, run the tests and compare like, hey, what? This change actually makes playback five times slower or just a bit slower. What is it? And then you can track that. It's part of the quality control, which is so important. Um, it, it helps developers to find out about, um, yeah, about pretty much, yeah, anything that can go wrong. Or good. Hey, this is way too fast. What happens? <laughs> It wasn't mean, meant to be so fast. And uh, that's it. Actually, I finished everything without melting. What kind of melting? Do you mind if I open the... Well, actually, let's go to um, Blender.today. There might be questions. I think the thread was already made. I am dying here because of the sound. I, should, I don't want to turn on the airco, so... All right. There are actually 16 comments. Let's try to answer the ones with the most votes. Unless they vote them themselves. I, we still haven't fixed that from last week. But okay, let's let's try. <laughs> let's give it a try. So, all right. The first question. Let me have a drink. Uh -huh. Ah, nice. Uh, I see the hearts. Tiles, Saskia, hi to see you. Clan Art says, Hola Pablo, just some questions. Quick questions. Number one, seeing that inflation is rising and plane tickets are getting more and more expensive, is there any talk of doing Beacon LA? Yes, absolutely. I think uh, in inflation and 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 thing and whatever. Uh it's not gonna get on the way. The only thing I can get on the way is the 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 you know pandemia <laughs> other than that i think uh, everybody here wants to wants to see it. we're gonna see how how the blender conference goes um out in october and once that is done maybe we can start talking about a beacon la but yeah that idea is still up in the air just uh you know global pandemic all right the second question when brush presets texture paint finally do come about do you think they will be shareable like procreate and photoshop brushes um i don't know how procreate or photoshop brushes work but as in can you interchange like is there like a kind of a text file looking format for them um because brush presets in blender they will be data blocks like regular data block so you can export like the same way like a material or like um, a mesh same same deal and I don't know if there is an open source um, format for this type of data what do GIMP or Krita use for this can we get an updated Blender Institute tour video last time we saw it it was still being painted and renovated yes actually we've been talking about it and just this morning we were visiting the a new side of the building so uh, for those who are not familiar there is a blender tour uh, hq so there is three videos so far yeah three videos of the well this this main two and the last one was four years ago yeah so I always read the comments, the, 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 the comments on this video are the most wholesome I can, I have seen lately. It's so cool to see people actually appreciate the work behind and the, the happiness behind. So when this video decides to load, 
you're gonna see a very happy ton showing the entire building and uh, if you want to see how it was before um, uh, that's Anya accountant um, it's super cool the oh the, even the sign wasn't even there all right now there is a huge blender sign in there you probably have seen it actually if you if you go for Lender Institute um, in the in in just Google you should see pictures of blender so yeah there is a there is a big blender sign nowadays over there and we are planning to make a a, a new um a new video for this but the i think it's better when we do like a like a when we have more people here right now the place is a bit of a, of a mess still even though we're here for a while got on and everything the, the place is still not as cool as it could be and uh, we just got a whole new area of the building so maybe we can do a video before that area gets uh, shaped all right mm. next question if you have time sure yeah stupid question but i'm still curious do you guys cutter frosted sp sprinkled donuts at the conference for the meme and no, I don't think there is uh, donuts. Um, I don't, actually, I think no one at the here at the uh, most of the people that work here actually never did the donut because the donut came out after. Um, so we're not that close to that uh, nostalgia of seeing the donut. At least I, I personally haven't. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I think this year is gonna be twenty years since I used Blender, so. But it is, I think, already. 2002, yeah. And 20 years of Blender as open source. So yeah, no, the, I think, um, but I mean, people, actually, the other, uh, I saw a guy with a, at NEC, there was one guy with a Blender logo, and inside the logo had a big donut. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> that would be actually super cool to see. Next. Or people can bring it. Or maybe Andrew, if it comes. That would be a... Uh, a good one. Polygon sponsor donuts. All right. The next question by Edox. They all have votes. Let's see. Have people been good guys and vote themselves? Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Oh, no. Hey, Pablo, I have three requests for you. Please, 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 please. <laughs> all right. I have one request for you. Bullet points or... Some break lines. All right. Um, I have a bunch of questions. If you can show the crash statistics for Blender downloaded from the Microsoft and the Snap Store, well, I don't. I'm not gonna log in now to it just because uh, we are streaming. But uh, well, we could look at it. I mean, I don't know how interesting is that the the crash uh, statistic and how much they show because sometimes you get. Uh, crashes for I mean how much actually Blender doesn't get, doesn't get any kind of data so I guess it's just the system wide it crashed I don't know how useful is that right because it can crash for many things from the a driver or an add-on or just Blender um, yeah we should we maybe for the Blender by the numbers um, blog post we could we could talk about that the next question. To do everything in your power to realize as many ideas as possible for Blender categories. Geometry, notes. And the third, the same, but only to work more on the shape school feature is one of the very professional features in in the Blender. Um, Edox, I wish I had the power to, to realize as many ideas as possible. Um, in the, 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 the concept of ideas. I don't know if you refer to right-click select, but uh, but yeah, I, I, it's not something that I can do. Uh, although, anybody can, and I myself am included in this, that sometimes if you really push for something, like an, like an idea, and you just have to be there, and, it, and the features uh, take, you know, effort and energy and then, uh, the, but why do you want this? Okay. And then you have to go and explain and make an image and, it, you know, so often there is things that one can do, but, um, 
not in the big scheme of things. And the, the, the sculpt module, the sculpt paint module is in good hands with uh, Julian, with Joel. Um, Geometry Nose is also in great hands. The community are adding um, their own uh, notes. Even new people from the community are adding their own notes. So I think they are, they are in good hands. Just give it time. The next question by Sansuls. Thanks for making the post, by the way. Sorry for the massive paragraphs. I'm trying to ask this for four weeks now. <laughs> okay. First, please add Aces View Transform Display device in the Blender in the future. Didn't we answer this last week? And I think so. I think we covered there. There was something about this already. Uh, the second question. The color of the gizmos in the viewport transform, rotate and scale. So when they are being selected, hovered on the change in brightness is very minimal and especially the blue one. Let's see it in action. So what is it? This, I guess. Yeah. So the, this, the highlight, the change in colors. Uh, yeah, actually, the blue one is barely visible, but that that's the nature of blue, right? Maybe So the Evo do you make it like lighter? I mean, why they, they could just go full white even right or or nearly white Because you you your the mouse is over this one widget, so you know what you're hovering about the pre-highlighting Sometimes can get a bit a bit too too strong to my taste, but in this case, I think we can we can afford a bit more weight, more more lighter colors. Um, so yeah, you're right. It could even go full white or what is this gray? Hmm. Next question. A small problem with the San Gizmo as well, because it's just one line attached to a sphere. From the front view, sometimes it's hard to understand the Z direction angle of the Sun in the solid view. Maybe adding more lines would make it easier to understand the rotation angle because it would give more perspective. Let's let's look at it. So if I have a Sun, they took my Sun. That's uh, the guy from lost was like for a whole season saying they took my son all right so this is what i you don't know in which direction is pointing like either f either back yeah this this has no indication of anything this this dot here could could have a little arrow at least because this dot is 3d similar to the spot this this arrow similar to this so yeah the dot uh, could have a bit more <laughs> could be more useful and um, then what the direction it's hard to understand the z rotation angle of the sun oh like on itself so yeah like this rotation <laughs> uh yeah i guess i guess that's a good point but maybe then a circle on it that could be the size of the of the angle because that's a big factor maybe you know what i mean so if you have a a sun and you change the angle you're basically making the light more diffuse so maybe this circle this could be like a circle around it that scales similar to the size of the of this guy maybe what you think mockups please oh i i think i mean this are all they could all be right click select the uh, proposals all right then uh, the last one says um about the necessity of a proxy system in blender i asked about a couple of weeks ago someone in the chat mentioned that with geometry nodes it's pretty easy to set up but the problem is that even though with the geometry node setup it could show a low poly geometry in the viewport and switch to high poly while rendering it still keeps the geometry in memory which is the main the, the problem and theoretically the proxy system doesn't load any geometry 
um, only the references while showing a point cloud bounding box in the viewport and only loads everything to RAM while rendering. That's a very good point. It's like, um, yeah, like a placeholder, like having an empty with a placeholder that would only load the geometry whenever needed, when the, when the proxy ex executed. Could be also some sort of level of detail-ish, kind of, but just like the level zero <laughs> or so, like no detail at all. Maybe the two concepts can be combined. But yeah, how would you make it work in uh, Blender? How would the how would it work? Is it a modifier? Is it a, a property of the object? Is it a property of the mesh or a collection property? Maybe maybe you can swap that entire collection with another one based on whatever. Is it a collection modifier? There it can go in so many ways. Or it's in a node. Um. It can go in so many ways that more information would make for a better proposal. Instead of just asking for a proxy system, I think the necessity of having one, it's clear. Just uh, yeah, the proposal needs a bit more, a bit more love and attention. <clears throat> um, how much? Okay, let's do five more questions. Photo Enix, Photo Enix bought themselves. Yep, <laughs> themselves. Okay, I mean, at this point, I should just probably go and, and read the ones at the bottom because they have been asked before. Let's see. Hola, Paolo. Hola, Photo Enix. Could you please use dark mode for developer.blender.org? Maybe just use dark reader browser extension. This. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> no, sorry. I don't want to <laughs> blind you. Um, Dark mode. Is there a, is there a dark mode, a built-in dark mode in this? Because I don't like using the dark reader, right? Uh, I, I used, I don't know if that's the one, but once I used one that it was like taking a toll on the GPU and even uh, like, I don't know, it was using the GPU way too much just to make the website darker. And as a design person, seeing those websites when like they, <laughs> no, I would rather have a, a theme. Mm. But then, yeah, you can have the add-on Dark Reader to only work on developer.blender.org and not on the rest. But then you have an entire extension just for one website. But I will keep it in mind. I will try. I need to try. Maybe maybe they fix the GPU issue. And the next question by Asset is very popular to vote your own comments. Aslan asks, hello, Pablo. I like your making bold. Hope you have a good week. Uh, just wondering if it's possible to add Vimeo videos to Blender community like YouTube ID and F keys to max to focus and maximize the post. Hey, Blender community feature requests. That's nice. That's new. Well, um, yeah, I guess Vimeo should be. Is it not possible to do Vimeo? Like if you do like Vimeo and then you do a number no? No, because with YouTube, we do have the YouTube um, embed. Yeah, I think it should be it should be possible. Is anybody using Vimeo anymore these days? Because, I mean, what would you use it for? For portfolios? Because you can actually, as part of your of your profile, you can have a Vimeo video here on your on your reel on Blender community. You can add your reel. If you actually go to your settings, you can add a Vimeo link here, uh, Vimeo or YouTube as your profile. So, so yeah, maybe shouldn't be too hard to add. And then F key to focus. Actually, this feature was implemented in the previous version of Blender community. So what would you like? Yeah, and it used to make this side of the window of the of the website centered and larger maybe i can do that all right uh, i'm gonna like this comment because it's uh, it's a feature request on our website where am i fire at wow fire didn't comment themselves so i'm gonna answer your question hi paulo you're amazing are there thank you are there talks about making blenders internal 
fluid simulation solvers more sophisticated than production ready. At the moment, there seems to be some, I would say many, limitations when it comes to making advanced smoke and fluid simulations. Absolutely, the Manta Flow, unfortunately, the the yeah the the smoke and fluid system was uh, changed, was replaced with Manta Flow, and then the developer couldn't work on it anymore, and now we are stuck with this thing that I don't know who maintains it. Doesn't even have a maintainer, so hopefully the geometry nodes. Uh, not geometry nodes, but like when the physics simulation gets added into like some kind of collection nodes, um, that will trigger the the need. And you know, Blender is hiring, by the way. So if you know anybody that is amazing at that, or maybe someone that stopped working for a some company that is related to this stuff, related to this stuff, please send them to Blender.org/jobs. And then you can see a senior Blender developer. And then you get to see. It's not too bad. Amsterdam is beautiful. Come, people. Come over. All right. And the last one. Um, out of voted? Yes. So I have a feature that I think it would be useful, which is the ability to add a keyframe and driver to a collection restrictions toggles like the viewport visibility yeah yeah this also has been asked uh, multiple times the yeah the, the way the system is done is not very uh, it's not just super easy to do related to dependency graph and maybe maybe it's now it's not too bad i should ask the lie about this because he was involved with the that part of the outliner when 2.80 came up um also, I want the selectable toggle could be keyframed and add a driver to the selectability. Uh, I think keyframes to, I mean, you're keyframing the UI at that point. That, I mean, why not, right? It's just a setting, but um, but that should be should have its own, you know, thought process and designed properly because the moment you start keying the UI, <laughs> animating the UI, um, then you're just kind of having some kind of interaction mode, like a like a like you're building an an app per se, right? So yeah, needs to be thought through. Okay, the last one because it's already here on the screen. Uh, Hi Pablo says PNZS yes. is GPU and CPU and GPU test results in open data comparable to each other i mean comparing score from rising ryzen with score from rtx are the measurement tools the same yeah everything is the same it's the the same system the same benchmark for everything just render with cpu or gpu why in the section compare more cpu devices i added the filters cuda and i don't see results for gpu cuda let's see so you're you're looking for Let's see. So what here, by the way, people that don't know, this is related to the Blender website called Open Data, which takes care of gathering Blender benchmarks and put them all in one website. You can compare, you can see what is the fastest GPU out there. Apparently the 3090 is faster than 3090 Ti. <laughs> it might be a bit misleading. Maybe the, the person who uploaded this is using two 3090s and one 3090 Ti, I think. That's something that needs to be fixed. It needs to tell, it needs to say, okay, what, which one? Otherwise, it's a bit misleading. Um, but yeah, okay, let's let's try to address what you were, the issue you were having. So you are doing, you're searching. All devices rendering with CPU and CUDA on any OS 3.1 group by device name. Oh, by the way, I think 3.2 is already available if you want to use it. Um, using 3.1 group by device name. So here I see the median score and I see that the top of the results are the RTX, the NVIDIA RTX 3090, a Titan, and uh, 
around there actually you can already some CPUs. It makes it easier if you group by like compute type. That way you can see at a glance, okay, CUDA, CPU, and uh, you can also sort by those. Um, but yeah, using this, I think it's going to make your search easier. Although, maybe making a screenshot and adding, pointing at things with question marks, maybe it's not super clear. Um, 3050, you filter by 3050. Yeah, it is here. You can see the CPU and the GPU split. Mm, although I'm not getting the same result, like Amity Athlon Silver. Athlon, Athlon. Ah, here I see it. Yeah. Strange, because I am seeing the GPU here. Sorry, I'm, maybe I'm missing something. I think I need to wrap it up. It's already ready five past the time that I'm supposed to finish this because I gotta run home to do the Spanish version of this. Espanol for my friends, uh, Hispanic friends. The show must continue though. So we're gonna get together about the same time and around in around one week. Next week is gonna be 199 and then we're gonna get the 200. Please let me know what should I do for the... Wait, wait, I'm going to be here on the 200. Uh-huh, all right. So the next one is the 11th and the next one is the 18th of July. Got to confirm that, but just start giving ideas. What would be a good celebration? Should I have a guest here with all this space for activities now and with COVID over or not? Should someone else host the show? Let me know. For the time being, I think I'm going to call it a day because I'm boiling here and uh, I will let, leave you to go download Blender 3.3 Alpha, test the features. If you make anything cool, please share it on, on Twitter with hashtag B3D, hashtag Geometry Notes, hashtag Grease Pencil. You can uh, get uh, more, more eyes to see it. I know people from the Grease Pencil team really always follow the hashtag Grease Pencil on Twitter. Um, I follow Geometry Nodes and B3D and all that, so share, share your work. People often ask, it's like, what should I do to get hired by Blender? And usually, since Blender doesn't do many calls for portfolios and stuff, the way is to just put your work out there and show what you what you do. Yeah, that, that's, that's it. Time to call it a day. I want to wrap it up. So if you are familiar with the show, you might know that in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, that will happen. That will happen. All right. Have fun. Download Blender. Have a great week. See you next week. Same place, same time for another Blender today live. 199.